Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. If you are new here, hi, my name is Carmel and you are very welcome. If you are not new here and you are returning, you will see that things are looking a little bit different today. That's because I'm in the process of changing up my setup and I'm hoping with this new equipment, you will be able to actually see my skin and see that I have imperfections just like everybody else. I certainly don't have perfect skin and I'm hoping that this process will get us to you know a place where we're doing more accurate reviews because you're actually seeing what my face really does look like. Today's video is finally episode two of my drugstore series where I go out and I find the very best products that the drugstore has to offer and I review them and test them on the channel. So the first episode was no product over £10 and today I have tried out and I've tested over a period of time 13 mascaras that I would love to share with you. So I really tested out these mascaras. It hasn't just been a one day test and that's it. That's why it's taken me so long to get to this point. And please don't forget to tell me in the comments what are your favourite drugstore mascaras and why do you love them? Before we get into it, just to let you know that I do post videos like this every week and I would love it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, let's get into these mascaras. Now, just a couple of things before we get into these mascaras. Number one, there are no waterproof mascaras in this list. I'm really sorry if you were hoping to see some. I don't like waterproof mascaras and I thought it would be unfair if I tested some and I hated them. So I didn't want to do that. Number two, I will mention the current prices of these mascaras, but they are very much subject to change. You know as well as I do that with drugstore products it can vary wildly from place to place and from website to website so do bear that in mind. Number three I did curl my lashes before I tried on all of these mascaras. I have very short straight lashes and I have very deep set eyes so if I don't curl my lashes then you won't see them and that is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video. I wanted to do this video because I don't have great lashes, I don't have long lashes, I don't have volume in them, and they definitely thinned out more. Everything thins out more, doesn't it, when you get older? But my lashes have definitely become more sparse, so I feel like I'm always on the hunt for the Holy Grail mascara. At the end of the video, I will show you a photo of my lashes with every single mascara on side by side. And I actually got the inspiration for this when I was doing some research on drugstore mascaras and I came across a YouTuber called Abby Young and she has some incredible videos, especially on product comparisons. I will link the specific video that I got the inspiration from for the side-by-side -side photos. I will link her channel and I will link that video below. Now she actually did grade and she gave a point score to every mascara. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you and explain to you what I think the pros and the cons, the strengths and the weaknesses for this each mascara are and hopefully you will find that in some way helpful. And lastly, just to let you know that every application of this mascara that you will see and you will see me doing, I will only have applied one coat. Okay, let's move on to mascara number one. So we're going to start with Essence and I picked two mascaras from Essence. This is the Essence Lash Princess. It's the False Lash Effect Mascara. And I think a lot of you will be familiar with this one. Uh, this retails for about £4. So this mascara I tried for the first time uh, back when I did episode one of the Drugstore series and I was really blown away by this mascara. I feel like it gives really great length and volume. I feel like you really only need a few swipes of this mascara to get the desired effect. I didn't feel like I needed to work hard. I felt like it was quite an instant gratification with this mascara. It gives really great length and really good separation and volume. And I think it's a really good all round mascara. As for the negatives of this, I would say that the one negative is that the formula is super super wet i know we all have our preferences whether we like a wet formula or whether we like a drier formula but for me sometimes it can get quite messy and i can only use this mascara when i ensure that i definitely wipe off the excess formula from the wand if i don't it will just get messy and when you have short sparse lashes like me it can get messy really quickly <laughs> so i think because it's quite a wet formula sometimes it can get 
a little bit clumpy. And I did notice that sometimes there would be a little bit of flaking by the end of the day, but nothing too excessive. If you are just looking for a really affordable mascara that literally will tick most boxes, I think you would really like this one. I can see why it's a viral product. I can see why people really love it. It is a great, great mascara. So the second mascara from Essence that I picked up was the Lash Princess, the purple version, and this is called the Volume Sculpted Mascara. They all look the same really, don't they? Apart from the different colours. Now, I knew nothing about this mascara when I picked it. I just looked at the ones that had kind of the best reviews and I was a little bit shocked and a little bit worried when I opened this up and I saw the wand. Look at the size of it. It's massive. It's huge. It's way bigger than my eyes and super, super curved. So this mascara, which I didn't know and kind of freaked me out a little bit, was that it's actually a fibre mascara mascara so I could see like little hairs appearing and little fibers and I I thought it was me I thought oh my gosh someone's used this and the eyelashes are on there no Carmel that's not what's happened it's a fiber mascara and I just didn't realize <laughs> when once I've got over the initial shock and I started to apply this it actually gave me the most desired effect that I wanted from a mascara honestly if you look at the side by side at the end I love how my lashes look. So let me just take you through the positives. This also retails for around four pounds as well. I think that this mascara gives you beautiful, volumized, fluttery looking lashes. And as I said, it was probably my favorite finish to a mascara. I think this is incredible for somebody with sparse lashes, somebody who lacks volume, and length and he's just looking for a little bit more oomph, I think you would really like this mascara if that sounds like you and your lashes. However, I have to say that the negatives on this occasion certainly outweigh the positives. And the first one is how hard I found the wand to use and you may see that in the footage of me applying it. Struggle to hold it, to use it, to wrap it around my lashes and I can't cope with a wand that I cannot manage. And the other negative for me was the fibres and I will be honest with you, I did find fibres dropping into my eyes unfortunately um, as the day went on which was really, really annoying. Personally, I think it's hard to wear. It doesn't feel nice. I don't like the fiber effect. However, I can imagine I would reach for this if I was having a really poor lash day. You know, remember our lashes go through cycles, so sometimes they can look really good, but then they will fall out after four to six weeks and they can be looking more sparse than usual. Imagine on those days I would reach for this, but on a daily basis, it's just too much hard work for me. So yeah, I mean, in the middle with this one, it's okay, but not for everyone. Next, we're going to be moving on to some mascaras by e.l.f. and I picked two. And these were two that I already had in my collection and that I'm very, very familiar with. The first one is the Lash and Roll and the second one is the most recent mascara release, which is the Lash Extender. So the Lash and Roll retails for around six pounds. So we'll start with this one. And if you don't know anything about this, this was, <laughs> is supposed to be a dupe for the Benefit Roller Lash. I think if you are looking for a great everyday mascara, something that's going to give you a really natural looking lash, this is for you. It has a really small, handy to use wand. It is quite a dry formula actually, so there's no danger of it getting really, really messy. It has a slightly curved wand, which I think is really good for wrapping around, you know, even the smallest of lashes. I think it's a really, really pretty mascara. And if you look at the, you know, the final result, it just gives me really natural looking lashes with literally no effort at all. I think if I was to pick some negatives about this mascara, I would probably say that this, I mean, this is my second tube of this. I did find that it did dry out a little bit quicker than some of my other mascaras. And I think it is just because it is a drier formula. And another thing I would say about this 
is that it won't give you dramatic lashes. So it will give you nice separation. It will give you a little bit of length and volume. I think if you're looking for drama, you know, if you want to go for a bit more of a false lash effect, I don't think you're going to get it from this. Not without several, several, several coats. So if you're looking for something natural, every day and obviously it's very very affordable so i think you know buying something like this just for wearing to work because you know, it doesn't break the bank and it does look really really nice and the second mascara is from elf and this is the lash extender now this is actually a tubing mascara now if you've never used a tubing mascara it can be a little bit of a funny experience so basically tubing mascaras i used to think before i understood tubing mascaras i thought it was to do with the tube but it's not. Basically, this formula will coat every single lash individually. And it can freak some people out a little bit, especially when it comes to removal of this mascara. When you remove a tubing mascara, it literally comes off in tube-like structures, you know, into the sink. The very first time I ever used a tubing mascara, I think it was MAC Giga Black, and I actually thought my lashes were falling out. So be aware your lashes are not falling out no they're not they are coming off in in those little structures it's quite clever i actually reviewed this on my channel i did a first impressions back in december and loved it and i still do love it and if you look at the final result of this mascara it gives a really good result so it gives great lift great length not the most amazing volume but it, it still does give you separation and i also find the wand really easy to work with. I find that it's quite small, you know, it's quite a skinny wand, but it's not too flimsy. And the next point is that it's super easy to remove. Now, if you've never used a tubing mascara before, you might not know that you don't remove these with a micellar water or a cleanser. You just need warm water, that's all you need. So that's either a pro or a con, because I know some people prefer to use a micellar water but for this one you just need a cloth you just need and some warm water and it will just come straight off so it's super easy to remove in terms of the negatives I would say first of all I feel like it dries down quite quickly so you know for those of you who like to do more than one coat I think you would have to work really really quickly with this mascara in order to do so and I also do wish that it gave just a little bit more volume than it does, but I do feel like it makes up for it in length. So yeah, really good mascara. And if you've never tried a tubing mascara, you should definitely give it a go. So the next mascara is from Lottie London, and this is the Lottie London Super Fake Lashes. It comes with the skinniest wand you will ever see. And I was a little bit worried because with super skinny ones, sometimes I do myself damage. I poke myself in the eye and get it everywhere. I can find them a little bit tough. This one, I was quite pleasantly surprised. So let's have a look at the positives of this mascara. So as I said, it has a very skinny wand, but it is super easy to use. And this is super lengthening. This mascara literally clings on to every single lash that you have. And you can feel that. You can actually feel that when you're applying it. It is super lengthening. For sure and I feel like this is the mascara that you should go for if you have tons of volume in your lashes um, and you just want a little bit of extra length and you want kind of a false lash effect. Obviously I don't have the volume or the length to get either of those things really with this mascara. I like it but I wouldn't reach for it too much because I feel like it did it did separate my lashes but too much. So it gave, it can give you that doll effect, you know, like the kind of twiggy look. If you want, if you like that look, go for this mascara. But for me, it separated them too much. So they were too separated and it kind of did clump them together a little bit. I think it really does depend on what your lashes are like to start with. If you like that very separated look, you would really like this mascara. If you like a dramatic look, you would like it. Um, and it does give a good amount of lift also. However, I did notice at the end of the day that I did have some minor flaking just underneath the eyes. It was nothing major, but it was probably the worst out of all of the mascaras. So that's all I would say. So great for length, great for drama. If you like a real separated lash, you would really like this. However, for 
me and my lashes, it just made them look like they didn't have any volume at all. But I think some people would really love this, especially if you're wanting a little bit of a false lash effect. Next, we're moving on to a mascara from Rimmel. And I actually wanted to choose a mascara that I thought that would be good for sensitive eyes. I know a lot of people feel like they can't wear mascara because they have really sensitive eyes and it is a massive problem, especially as you get a little bit older. I picked up the Rimmel Kind and Free. Now I'd used, they have like a skin tint, the Kind and Free, and I really enjoyed that. So I thought I would really love this. And this retails for about 10 pounds, which I think is quite excessive. <laughs> it comes in their Kind and Free packaging. I'm, I'm gonna really struggle now to tell you some of the positives um, because I hate this mascara so much. So if you love this mascara, please do not be offended. Let's look at the positives, right? Let's start positively. It has a really nice thin wand, very, very easy to use. And as soon as I started using it, I thought this is gonna be great. Cause like the Lottie London, it clings on to every single lash. However, that's where the positives stop for me because there is one factor with this mascara that I just cannot cope with. And it's the fragrance. I have never, ever smelled a product like this in my life. And it's not even that I don't care for the fragrance. It smells like chemicals and that baffles my brain. I went onto the website and it says that it's, you know, kind and caring and free from this and free from that. And after all of these statements, it had an asterisk, all right? And it actually said fragrance free too. And I was trying to look at where the asterisk was, you know, what, what does this mean? What's the exception? But I couldn't find it anywhere. So if you can shed any light as to why this smells like an actual chemical factory, I would love to hear what it is. I would not advise getting this for that reason. However, if we look at the performance of the mascara, unfortunately, the performance didn't match up to my expectations either. I found it very, very sticky. I found it quite gloopy. I honestly didn't mind the finished results. I felt like I got quite a natural looking lash out of it. However, over the next you know few hours uh, after applying it, I could still get the scent of it. So have you used this? If you've used this, I would love to hear your opinion. And you know, maybe, have I got a faulty one? I don't know, have I got a faulty one? I'm not buying another to find out, that's for sure. So if you've used it, please do let me know. I would be very interested in hearing your opinion. But I Next, we are moving on to a mascara from NYX. And this was probably the biggest surprise of the bunch for me. So this is the NYX Worth the Hype. And this mascara retails for around 9 pounds 10 pounds. When I first opened this mascara, I was a little bit worried when I saw the wand. It's a really quite a big thick brush. And sometimes when you get a big thick brush, it can get quite messy, especially when you've got shorter lashes or smaller eyes. And sometimes they can be quite hard to manage. But I was so pleasantly surprised with this mascara. This gave me some good length, but the volume. This coated lashes on my eyes that I didn't know I had. It gave me super lovely volume. It gave me lovely length. It gave a really beautiful amount of separation. And I was really delighted that the formula was quite on the dry side. I don't love wet, wet formulas. I love this mascara and it's definitely been one that I've been reaching for more and more. The only negatives I would say for this is that it is quite a dry formula. So sometimes you do have to keep dipping back in to the tube, you know, to get as, you know, to get the product that you want. I also feel like sometimes, you know, chunkier brushes, they're not great for the bottom lashes. I mean, it's not a huge brush, but it's still, you know, on the bigger side to some of the skinny ones that I've tried. And sometimes it can get a bit messy when you're trying to do the bottom lashes. But that really is me nitpicking. But if you are sat there thinking, I really need a good volumizing mascara, the NYX, it's really good. And, and you know what? I don't buy much NYX. To be honest, I don't have that many NYX products and I'm thinking that I need to change that because 
the formula is beautiful, the finish is beautiful. It's not going to give you super dramatic length, but if you're after volume, NYX should be one of your number one choices. It's wonderful. I'm going to move on now to Maybelline, and this is a beautiful mascara, and it is Maybelline Sky High, and this retails for around £12. So it has a really nice thin wand and it gives amazing length and amazing lift. I couldn't believe the lift that this mascara actually gives and the length. It is super lightweight on the lashes. You can't even feel that it's there. It gives you a lots of time to work so you can go in with multiple coats and it will allow you to do so. It felt like it was really, really easy to remove. In fact, all of these were easy to remove, to be honest. The only negatives I would say about this is that it doesn't give a massive amount of volume. And I don't like the wand. It's very, very flimsy. It's a very plastic, flimsy wand. I think if they could sort this wand out, it would be perfection. But I guess, I guess the wand is part of the reason as to why it's so good. But if you're looking for separation, length and lift, this is the one for you. Now, the next Maybelline mascara I have for you is the Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect. And I think most of us will recognize this mascara. I have worn this off and on for years. And this Fan Effect mascara retails for about £10. It has a really nice uh, kind of compact wand uh, that is slightly curved, quite similar to the e.l.f. Lash and Roll wand, actually. This is a medium formula, so it's not too wet and it's not too dry. And this will give you amazing length and amazing volume. This, for me, is something I would describe as a great all-rounder. It's a great all-rounder mascara. It's going to give you a little bit of everything. You will see what incredible volume and natural separation that it gives. If you have great lashes to begin with, this will just be so easy to use for you. So definitely a great all-rounder mascara. The only negative that I could find for this, and it really is nitpicking, is that it was a little bit harder to remove than some of the others. It just took me a little bit longer, but there was no smudging, no flaking, stayed in place. So absolutely worth the money. And you know, it's been an iconic mascara for so many years. And there's a reason for that. It's because it is so good. Now, lastly, in relation to Maybelline, I actually put out a um, post on the community page on my channel just to ask if anybody had any requests when it came to testing out and reviewing some mascaras. And one of my beautiful subscribers, Gillian, who I absolutely love, so supportive always to me and my channel. So I was more than happy to review um, a lash primer. This is the um, Lash Sensational Tinted Primer, and it retails for about £13. Now, any primer that I've ever used has always been white, so obviously I didn't read the bit that it was tinted, but I guess, I guess that's a good idea. So I decided to try the tinted primer, the Maybelline Tinted Primer, the Sky High with the Sky High Mascara. So the primer has the exact same wand as the Sky High, mascara so it is a little bit bendy and a little bit finicky and I think that it did give me a little bit more drama but I feel as though it gave me a little bit more drama because it actually stuck a few of my lashes together. I'm going to be honest with you I am not the biggest fan of this primer. I've used primers before. I think when I even when I started out wearing mascara back when I was 13, 14, I used to use a L'Oreal one and I used to love it. It was like black on one side, white on the other. And so I do feel like primers can be really good. This one, I'm not a big fan of. I felt like it was quite wet. It was quite clumpy. I felt like it was just adding tons of products to my lashes and I could really feel it there, especially when I applied the mascara on top. Just being completely real and honest, I think you would be better just putting two coats of the Maybelline Sky High on or any mascara, to be honest. I mean, what I think, you know, you either love primers or you don't. I personally 
think it is an unnecessary expensive step. What I would do instead of paying £13 for a lash primer, I would get a volumizing mascara and use them both together. I think if this would have been good if the wand had been different, so maybe if, if this wand would have given me more volume and then this wand would have given me um, more length. But unfortunately, that's not how these work. Uh, they're both just quite lengthening. Yeah, just in my opinion, I don't think it's necessary. But if you have a lash primer that you use and love, and if you found a way to make this work, do let me know in the comments or do let us know in the comments. Next, we are moving on to L'Oreal. L'Oreal, just like Maybelline, can do a mascara. They really can. And I have three to show you from the brand. So the first one is a very popular one and this is L'Oreal Lash Paradise. And this retails for about £13. It has quite a large wand, which I did find a little bit tricky to manoeuvre at times. However, it really does a great job in giving you really beautiful, volumised, fluttery lashes. I feel like it, it gives you kind of that fluttery, sultry look, and I really enjoyed it. I also found that the formula was very, very black too, which I really enjoyed. I think if I was to pick some negatives of this, it would be, first of all, that the wand is quite big and can be quite hard to maneuver around smaller lashes or smaller eyes. And I also found the formula to be quite wet. If I just show you here, I don't know if you can see, but it like there's tons and tons of product on the actual wand, um, which makes it a little bit messy for me. I think if you are looking for, you know, that fluttery effect, if you're looking for tons of volume, you're really going to like Lash Paradise. Unlike some of the vol other volumizing mascaras, like uh, for example, the NYX, I think this gives you a little bit more length also. So yeah, another one that can be classed as a really good all-rounder and a number one for so many people. Next up, we have probably the most controversial mascara on the block. <laughs> and this is the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift. The Telescopic Lift, this it retails for about £13. Obviously this came out a while ago and I think we all know the controversy that surrounded it. Obviously seen what had happened in Lashgate. And when I see something like that, it automatically puts me off. So I didn't buy it. I wanted to buy it because I was so intrigued. I didn't go out and buy it until it was time to, to kind of test out some mascaras. And I'm a bit gutted that I've missed out on it for so long. It's so good. And for me, this is probably the best lengthening mascara of the bunch. So I felt like it gave me a dramatic amount of length and also an amazing lift. So it's called telescopic lift because it does lift your lashes. Quite similar to the Maybelline Sky High, but I think this might actually do a better job at lifting those lashes. As you'll be able to see with the end result, my lashes do look really lengthened, really curled, really lifted. Um, but let me tell you about the things that I don't love about this mascara. So the first one is the wand. So the wand is not like anything I've ever seen before. It's kind of flat. I would say the wand is tricky. You need to kind of figure out how you're going to work it, how are you going to use it. It can get a little bit tricky, you know, you can end up with a little bit of a bulk in the eye now and again. And I would say that the formula is quite wet, so make sure that you are wiping off that excess product. And I also felt like when I was applying it, even though it gave me what I needed from one coat, I did feel like it dried down quite quickly. So if you are someone that likes to go in with several coats, bear in mind that you might want to work a little bit faster with this one. If you're looking for some length in those lashes, you cannot go wrong with telescopic lift. And especially if you feel like you have really straight lashes that kind of point straight or point down, if you curl your lashes and then use this, you're going to get the lift and it stays in place all day. No flaking, no smudging, no budging. It's really, really good. Now, last but not least, we have, I think this is the newest mascara on the block. And this is the new L'Oreal Panorama. And this retails for about £13. L'Oreal mascara is a little bit more on the pricey side, I find. 
I love this mascara. This is my current favourite and there's a few reasons why I love this mascara. So first of all, I love the wand. The wand, the shape of it, the triangular shape, whether you use the tip or whether you use the more bulkier parts, it's great for fanning out those lashes and the little part, the little point, is great for getting into the inner corner and goes without saying that, that it's amazing for the bottom lashes. When I first got this mascara, I actually thought that I'd received a trial size because it is quite a small wand, but I really like that. You know, when you get really big ones, like really long ones, like the telescopic lift, it can get a little bit tricky and a little bit hard to manage. I feel like this is just such a really well-designed wand. And I think this, is a mascara that ticks all the boxes. So it's an amazing all rounder. So it gives really nice length, it gives really nice volume, really nice separation, and it will stay in place all day. I'd say the only negative for me with this mascara is it can get a little bit wet. So if you have a look around my tube, it has got a little bit messy because sometimes I have to wipe off the excess product. But I think as long as you wipe off that excess, as with any mascara, then you're going to get a really lovely lash at the end of it and just to wrap up the reviews here is a side by side of all of the lashes in their finished state dried down side by side and you can have a look at the differences and the similarities So there we have it. That is my mascara roundup. Oh, I've spoken a lot today, haven't I? But I do hope that that was helpful in some way or another. And don't forget to let everybody know what are your favorite drugstore mascaras. Please do let us know in the comments because it really is helpful for so many people. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I so appreciate you being here with me. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next one. But until then, take care. And bye for now.